All right, so rheumatology, let's take a general approach to the patient with quote unquote joint pain. You'll get a lot of these. So review the anatomy of the joint. The joint is just where two bones come together and you've got bones on either side, cartilage at the end of the bone, and then in between at the joint, you've got the synovial fluid and that's what allows the joint to move in a fluid-like motion. Uh, because it reduces uh, the friction between the bones. Um, on either side of the bone, you're going to have a ligament. Ligaments connect bone to bone. And then uh, you'll have uh, the synovial membrane, which uh, lines the joint cavity. And it's from the synovial membrane that you create synovial fluid. Synovial fluid is an ultrafiltrate of plasma. So it's going to be reflective of, the, of uh, whatever is in the plasma. So if you've got hypercalcemia, you're going to have high calcium in your synovial fluid. And that's going to be critical when it comes to pseudogout. Same with uricemia and gout. Okay, so joint pain. Joint pain is a major cause of disability and morbidity, particularly in the older population. When we start talking about osteoarthritis, uh, this is a major cause of, uh, of, of re early retirement, of disability, and so forth. Arthralgia versus arthritis. What is it? Arthralgia is any kind of pain that's referred to the joint. So it could be referred pain. It could be muscle pain, tendon pain, bone pain. It doesn't have to be at the joint. It's just pain that is reflected at the joint. It could be from the joint, but it doesn't have to. Arthritis is a specific pathologic process. It's inflammation of the joint structure. Now that can be due to an autoimmune cause or that can be due to wear and tear. But arthritis is a specific process where you have inflammation of the joint structure. There's virtually no uh, way that you can differentiate arthralgia from arthritis without at least a physical exam. So osteoarthritis versus rheumatoid arthritis, how do you know? Well, you're going to have to do a physical exam. History might tell you some things, but you have to do a physical exam. Uh, and even then, that might not still be enough. The synovial fluid, as I mentioned, is an ultrafiltrate of the serum. So if there is any kind of systemic inflammatory disease, then you can get inflammation of the uh, of the synovial fluid. So if you have elevated white count, uh, if you have bacteria in your uh, in your bloodstream, that stuff can find its way to the joint space and you can get inflammation in your joint space. And so arthritis is a possible symptom of any systemic inflammatory disease. Here's the differential diagnosis of joint pain, and this is not all-inclusive. This is just some of the major differentials. So we've got trauma. That's mostly a topic of surgery. Infection, gonococcal, non-gonococcal, Lyme, viral, mycobacterial, fungal. We've got the gout, gout and pseudogout, which are both caused from crystals, and that's both due to a, uh, those are both due to a, an elevation in uh, some kind of chemical, either uric acid or calcium, in the blood. The degenerative uh, arthritis, that's osteoarthritis, that's the most common. Malignancy, that can, become, that can come from something local, like an osteosarcoma or osteochondroma. It can come from a metastasis, or it can come from a blood tumor. Rheumatic joint pain, which is what we're going to spend most of the uh, rheumatic or rheumatology uh, section talking about. We got rheumatoid arthritis, Reiter's syndrome, psoriatic arthritis, lupus, ankylosing spondylitis, acute rheumatic fever, Sjogren's syndrome, and more, much, much more. So we have a huge wide differential. And so here, more than ever, it's going to be essential to have a good history and a physical exam in order to make a proper diagnosis. Everything you get in your history and everything you find in your physical exam is going to help you differentiate from this wide, wide uh, list of possible causes of joint pain. So how do we take a good history in the patient with joint pain? Well, I like to use what's called SLICE, S-L-I-C-E. And that helps us get a glimpse of all the different important factors uh, that can be behind joint pain. So SLICE. S stands for systemic. So does the patient have any other symptoms that accompany the joint pain? 
Does the patient have fever? Do they have chills? Does the patient have a rash? If the patient has a rash, you might think of possible of a, possibly a vasculitis, like Wagner's granulomatosis, Churg-Strauss disease. That can cause uh, joint pain. If the patient has fever, you might think gout. You might think uh, a possible rheumatoid arthritis. You might think uh, of an infectious cause. Even more so with chills, you'd think an infectious cause. Does the patient have fatigue? You might think rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, you might think polymyalgia rheumatica. How about the location? Which joint is sore? Is it one? Is it some? Is it multiple? If it's multiple, is the distri distribution symmetrical? With the systemic causes, the distribution tends to be symmetrical, whereas with osteoarthritis, the distribution can be asymmetrical. If it's trauma, it can be asymmetrical. I got hit in my right knee. Well, I'm not going to have pain in my left knee. I'm just going to have pain in my right knee. So uh, when we think symmetrical, we think systemic. When we think asymmetrical, we think non-systemic. But that's not always the case. And there are some processes that don't affect certain joints. For instance, rheumatoid arthritis does not affect the distal interphalangeal joints. So if the distal interphalangeal joints are inflamed, then we would think something other than rheumatoid arthritis. Even though rheumatoid arthritis namely affects the hands, it does not affect the distal interphalangeal joints. Distal interphalangeal joints are very affected by psoriatic arthritis. So uh, you'd have to weigh which joints are sore. Inflammation. Are the joints inflamed? Particularly when we're talking about very erythemic, warm, swollen, fluctuant joints. We're thinking gout, we're thinking pseudogout, we're thinking rheumatoid arthritis, or septic arthritis. It's cases where the joint is very inflamed that we're going to have to get an arthrocentesis to examine the joint fluid. C for chronicity. Is this a recent onset or is it an insidious onset? Recent onset joint pain could be something like polymyalgia rheumatica. It could be something like septic joint. Uh, whereas an insidious onset, something that's more chronic, is something like perhaps uh, rheumatoid arthritis or lupus. Does the pain come and go or is it constant? What time of day is the pain worse? With the inflammatory joint pains, they're going to be worse in the morning. So lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, these patients, uh, or uh, ankylosing spondylitis, uh, these patients are going to wake up with joint pain, and the pain is going to get better as the day goes on. Whereas in osteoarthritis, it's not so much of an inflammatory disease as much of, as it's a degenerative disease, and so the pain is going to get worse as the day goes on rather than get better. And then finally, is there evidence of trauma? And that's something obvious. If there's any uh, trauma, then we have to think that that's the number one cause as, a, as opposed to a systemic or an autoimmune disease. So what are some extra articular symptoms? We always have to keep an eye out for those. So anytime you have arthritis, you have to always ask yourself, does the patient have any other symptoms? Because that can point you towards a possible, uh, a possible diagnosis. So infectious, malignant, or other rheumatologic autoimmune diseases tend to have extra articular symptoms. So for instance, with septic arthritis, with infections, fever, chills, nausea, and rash, and erythema migrans and Lyme disease, that's the target rash. With malignancies, of course, you're going to get pallor, easy bruising, and infection because you're uh, going to have a, uh, a decrease in blood cell count in all, all lines. With the rheumatologic and autoimmune diseases, it's all sorts of things. Any rheumatologic disease can cause fever and weight loss. Uh, with Reiter's syndrome, you're going to have urethritis, history of chlamydial infection or enteritis, conjunctival infection or conjunctivitis. With psoriatic arthritis, you're going to get the sausage digits, the big inflamed fingers. And you can have nail abnormalities, you can have psoriasis underneath your nails. Systemic lupus erythematosus or lupus, you get the malar rash over your cheeks. And renal insufficiency is another thing that you might see uh, coincidentally on labs. Ankylosing spondylitis is low back pain. You also get a fever. Um, Sjogren syndrome is dry eyes and dry mouth, which may accompany uh, joint pain. And Wegener's granulomatosis, these patients have chronic upper respiratory tract infections, and that may even cause an abrupt, uh, a, uh, a rupture of the, the nasal septum. So 
we're going to go over all of these in greater detail in individual sections, but uh, it's just kind of good to know that the extra articular symptoms can help you put an eye on to what the cause of the arthritis is. And a lot of these aren't going to present with arthritis as the primary complaint. Obviously, if you have uh, chronic upper respiratory tract infections or sausage digits or urethritis, you're going to present with that possibly more than the arthritis. Oh, okay, and uh, where is it? Okay, what never has articular, extra articular symptoms? That's osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis is the most chronic form, or common form of chronic arthritis. Osteoarthritis is just strictly limited to the joints. It's a degenerative disease of the joint. Okay, so the laboratory workup for joint pain. Any patient who has symptoms of an inflamed, red, fluctuant, erythematous joint, you're going to get a joint aspirate. That's a, a uh, just you're aspirating the joint fluid. Uh, an arthrocentesis is another word for that. So you're going to get a joint aspirate. You're going to look for cells, and you're going to look for crystals, and uh, that's going to help you put a, uh, a, a finger on what the cause might be if it's a very uh, obviously inflamed joint. Patients with signs of osteoarthritis, meaning that they don't have any extra articular symptoms, especially if they're older uh, and uh, symmetrical, particularly in the knees, uh, Plain radiography is going to be the best initial test, but CT is more accurate. Uh, CT is always more accurate than x-ray. Osteoarthritis does not have to be symmetrical. It can be asymmetrical, particularly if there's trauma involved. Patients with signs of rheumatologic diseases, the bread and butter that we rely on are autoantibodies in the serum, and those can be ordered corresponding with the suspected syndrome. So we'll learn which each of the autoantibodies are that correspond to each of the syndromes, and those are going to be what we may order uh, in order to diagnose or screen for a suspected syndrome. And they have various levels of sensitivity and specificity. So joint aspiration, this is an arthrocentesis, and a red, warm, swollen, painful joint tends to point to gout or pseudogout, or septic arthritis, or it can uh, point towards rheumatoid arthritis. So anytime you have a red, warm, swollen, painful joint, you're going to want to get a joint aspiration as the first step. And in the joint aspiration, we look for color, we look for cells, and we look for crystals. And it's good to get a culture, too. So joint aspiration, best initial diagnostic step in the diagnosis of gout, pseudogout, and septic arthritis. How about those autoantibodies that we talked about? Well, we'll go into each of these in detail in each individual section, but anti-nuclear antibodies, those are anti-Rho and anti-Law. Those are in Sjogren's syndrome, uh, associated with Sjogren's syndrome. Anti-Centromere is associated with Crest syndrome. Anti-Histone is associated with drug-induced lupus. Anti-DSDNA and anti-Smith are associated with systemic lupus erythematosus. Rheumatoid factor and anti-CCP are seen in patients with rheumatoid arthritis, but the absence of these do not rule out RA. So, like I said, they're going to have various uh, levels of sensitivity and specificity. Some are very, very specific, some are very, very sensitive, and so you'll have to know each one of those as you go through. Um, Okay, and then uh, C. anca is associated with Wegener's granulomatosis, and P. anca is associated with Churg Strauss and polyarteritis nodosa. Uh, so think of anca with the vasculitis.